welcome to Psychic Medium Tony Green. I'm Tony Green and I am the Psychic Medium. <laughs> I always think doing my intro is like so hilarious because <laughs> I never have it prepared. I'm like taking notes, trying to remember everything I want to say. And then all of a sudden I hear five seconds into showtime in a British accent. Uh, Cause that's, I don't know. I, maybe it's not British. Maybe I'm wrong. And then I'm like, Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> so here we go again. Okay. Everybody so much going on right now. Okay. First of all, I already started a clearing for negativity and the sources or causes of negativity for everybody listening, watching, re-listening, re-watching. Breathe that out. Yes. Okay. On Thursday, I'm going to be on the show Talk in the Night with Paranormal Phil. And that show airs from 9 until 11. Uh, you can call in and ask questions, join the conversation, talk about paranormal things. I think he talks about a lot of really spooky things. <laughs> I do not know why that excites me, but I think I have a feeling. Paranormal. Do you want to know about aliens? Call in and ask Phil. We'll talk about it. Do you want to know about other things? Call in. Let's talk about it on the show. Okie dokie. So very excited and honored for that. If you didn't catch my show um, on with Peter G, please. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> Peter, thank you again so much for having me on and um, being such an incredible host, just an incredible host. Um, <clears throat> throughout the show, oh, wait, I'm not done doing announcements. Hey, Stevie, how are you? I love you, bug. Um, it's, um, so Steven is my youngest brother, and he's a little sweet pea. And he just gets the biggest kick. Like he'll find my shows or I'll send them to him. And he, he just, he loves um, when I say hi to him on the show. So I always try to remember to do that. And sometimes I forget and I feel, I honestly feel like, oh my gosh, my show wasn't complete. I want to do a show with Steven and I just have him on air with me, you know, sitting next to me and just uh, kind of chat a bit. Uh, I wouldn't be able to take callers or anything, but he is the funniest dude. He is like, we were driving the other day, we had gone to dinner and uh, taking him back. He's like, he was telling me he's Dr. Love, <laughs> which is which is just hilarious to me, but I, I'm going to tell you, my brother must have been like channeling something because the insight and wisdom that was coming through this little dude was crazy. I was like cracking up, <laughs> cracking up. Okay. Um, so, okay, you guys, guess what's coming up? Superhero Stomp. Now, my nieces don't want to take credit. They, they always say, don't make it about me. It's about the families in Pewaukee who have children that have cancer. That's a fact. It is. But I'm going to make it a little bit about my nieces because I think when very young people can have the um, compassion and the ability to put together a fundraiser of this size that keeps growing and um, keep it going. I think that's amazing. So my nieces, when my, she's 20, 20 21, 22, when my oldest niece <laughs> was in high school, she started 
the superhero stomp and they live in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. And the idea behind this is they had found out that there were four families in Pewaukee that had children with cancer. And they decided to do a fundraiser to help the families directly. So they uh, do a lot of 5Ks. My niece was on cross country and my sister does a ton of 5Ks. Now, um, this, you know, I, I don't, I try not to uh, put too much personal information out, but my sister also has um, lymphoma. So this is something that's very, um, very um, per like it's it's personal to them for that reason also. Um, but this was for the children, um, the families with children who were um, being cared for for cancer. Okay. It was a 5K. They called it the superhero stop. They wanted children to show up and participate. They wanted the community to show up. So what they did is they had children dress up as their favorite superhero. I think in the first one, like Superman showed up, Batman showed up, and and all like um, the stormtroopers from Star Wars show up. It is the greatest event. So there's a shorter run for younger children. And then there's the 5K for adults. And it is just such an amazing event. Now, I, I this week, I'm going to be going around getting, hopefully, gift certificates from businesses so that they can be raffled off. I was supposed to already be on this, and I have not been on it. I am not doing my job as an aunt or my nieces, I'm just saying right now. I'm admitting it wholeheartedly. Um, if you would like to donate to the superhero stomp, you can go to my, the, the, I think at this point, the easiest way is go to my Facebook page and like click the link. If you scroll down, you'll find superhero stomp and be able to click on it. Um, and you'll be able to donate no matter where you are in the world. <clears throat> If you would like to donate a gift certificate, uh, you can send that to, well, you can send it to my work address and then we can raffle that off for um, everybody at the race. Yep, that's it. That's what we're doing. Okay, now having said all, I think that's everything. I have notes, they're way over there. Of course, but I think I got everything I needed to say. <laughs> oh, by the way, I believe the race is um, May 22nd. So it is coming up in a couple of weeks here. Okie dokie. I am going to start taking callers. Okay. When I say your area code, please give me your name and your where you're calling from, and an exact question. The exact question should be um, uh, 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 not vague. <laughs> I think, you know what the problem is? <laughs> I think that I just have not had enough caffeine yet this morning. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And this isn't even caffeine. <laughs> this is like my favorite morning drink. No, it's not whiskey. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you would think it is, right? You would totally think it, it is not. <laughs> okay. I have an exact question prepared. Um, and uh, or an exact connection to the other side. And an exact connection is like Judy, my mom, Bill, my uncle, Mike, my grandpa. And then if, if you have a specific 
question for them or conversation for them, give that to me right away. There are a lot of people that call in that I try to get to um, during the show. Yep. And so the more exact we can be, um, the more people I can help today. Also, the more um, the more I can help you. Now, I love to do healings or clearings during um, the show because um, even if you don't have a question or you don't get a question answered, everybody who's watching or listening will at least get some healing or some clearing. And I'm going to do the self-love one. So let's do, um, we unconditionally love ourselves. I get a no. Everything starts and ends with love. We come from love. We return to love. Without this meat suit that we wear, um, we are love. And I'm going to tell you, I've had three near-death experiences that I know of. There may have been more. <laughs> I promise you I'm not drunk today. I promise you it's very early for me to be drinking. And I didn't even drink last night even. <laughs> so I know, like, I rarely drink. I very rarely drink. Very rarely. Um, but, okay, but focus. <laughs> don't, don't focus. I've had three near-death experiences. The last one when I left my body, I had the experience of being out of my body, hearing what people were saying around me. And the funny thing is there were two other people there during this last near-death experience. And they were talking about what do we do with her? Like they were going to dig a hole in their backyard and bury my ass. <laughs> I, I, I would like to believe that that's not what they meant. <laughs> but in, in retrospect, what the hell were they talking about? What are we going to do with her? Um, paramedic anybody? <laughs> um, police anybody? ambulance anybody anybody you are two full-grown adults do not grab a shovel and start digging a hole whatever you do do not do that okay i hope everybody is like cracking up at this it's it's actually true it's it's factual it's true so um when i was out of my body these are the experiences some of the, I'm not going to tell you everything because it's just such a long, whew, it can be a really, uh, any story I tell can be a really, really long story. <laughs> but this one really is kind of a bit longer. So, um, so I, I, when I was out of my body and they were talking about what to do with me, it didn't even phase me. Like, I wasn't like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What should we do with her? It didn't even phase me. I was just like, doi -de -doi. Um, And But the feeling, like I had no pain and I should have had tremendous pain. My ankle was shattered. I have 13 pins and two plates in my ankle. And the doctor wasn't sure. He gave me a choice. <laughs> he said, do you want to be able to wear heels? Or do you want to be able to run? And I should have said both. Like, you're a surgeon. Fix my shit. Right? I should have said both. But I was like, heels, of course. Heels. <laughs> like, I should have said run. I could have worked myself up to heels again. But I, in my mind in that moment, it was heels. And I had a really serious head injury. I had hit my head on the cement. It bounced up. Hit again. And um, so, so the, the out of the body, not feeling not one ounce of pain. Okay. Well, then I start ascending. Just rolling in the deep. Um, what you know about rolling? I know a lot about rolling in that deep. <laughs> I know a lot about it. Um, 
And, but the main thing I remember is I didn't care. It was just pure love. It's, it's not even a love we feel here because we're so guarded. It's not a love. I don't care who they talk about is so loving, so caring. Like when a baby first pops out of a hoo-ha and everybody wants to touch that baby, it's because it still has that essence of that pure love. You want to smell that baby's head? It's because that's a smell of heaven. So I just recall, I recall just being okay with everything. Like just being in this complete state of peace and okay and, um, and love. Just this feeling of love. Now I did get to a point where like, I, as I was ascending, I was seeing like my mom and my sister and my another sister. And then um, I was going higher and higher. And I was just like, hey, mom. Hey, this, hey, that. And then I saw my two little dogs, Max and Bella. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and in that moment, like, in that moment that I saw them, I also saw what would happen to them if I kept going. So they showed me if they ended up with this person, this person, and this person. And it was like a split second, boom, boom, boom. It should have taken like 10 minutes to show me all of that. But it, like the vision was like, because the higher you go up, the faster you get the connection, the faster you are, you know, getting the information and seeing the things that are coming or could be possibilities. And in that moment, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, no, no, I can't go. Now, up until this point, I was like, obviously laying on a cement, not obviously, but I was laying on cement and, um, the, the woman that was there would scream at me, get up. Like, I'm dead. I can't. Like, I'm on my way back home. Be off. Be off. Put the shovel down. I can't get up. But I would, like, try. And there was just this shaking. Like, I can't even explain it. Like, everything would just, like, be like, like, I couldn't even move, even if I wanted to, because I wasn't in my body. I was out my body. Everybody out your body. Everybody out your body. And I think that's why I'm such a fucking kook. Oh, did I say the F word on air? Sorry. Do a bleep through that if you can. Let's just say I said fudging kook. Because in the scheme of things, um, it's not, you know, life is supposed to be fun. Life is supposed to be about love. We're supposed to learn to have the same love here that we have there. We're supposed to learn. We're supposed to live with the same faith and everything's going to be okay here as we do there. We're supposed to be in that same place of, you know what, I'm here for other people. I mean, I'm for yourself also, of course, but the selflessness of like coming back for um, Max and Bella, who are now there, miss them so much, those all stinkers, um, and how you want to make sure the people that you love and care about are okay here. That's the love. That's one million percent the love. And I'm hearing that song right now. Where is the love? It's here. It starts here. And the more you expand on that, the more it um, becomes you. It's like when you first fall in love with someone. Hey, what's your name? How you doing? <laughs> oh, you got plans? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Can 
can I be serious for two minutes? No, no, I cannot. <laughs> um, oh, the ringing in my ears is so intense right now. I think they're telling me, girl, get on your story. <laughs> So the more we come from that space of love, the less fear we have, the more we live that love, we let that love become us, the more our gifts develop, the more we um, can hear, see, feel the other side, understand everybody else in this world. But the most important thing that happens when we allow ourselves to be in that infant state again of love is we get to live our life with no limits. Now, let me repeat that. What limits us is not other people. What limits us is fear and perception. I know, it's so deep from such a kook. Um, the fear... Of, of everything that's happened in the past, the, the perception of what other people will, will think or want or do. And, and once we are in that state of love, and you don't have to even work on getting rid of the fear, you just work on love, right? Seeing the love, having the love. Um, everything falls into place. Now, this is the love like when you first fall in love with someone and you think it's about that other person and their feelings for you. You are wrong. I'm so sad, but you are wrong. Um, the reason you fall in love. The re okay, when you meet somebody and you fall in love with them, all those endorphins and everything else are coming out of your body. Uh, you're experiencing that love. That has nothing to do with what they're giving back. And this is where we get messed up in relationships. We think because we're feeling this and we have this overwhelming feeling of love that we just want to hold on to. We think it's something they're giving us or doing to us. That's just our heart allowing them to be there with us. Our heart allowing us to feel that intensity again. And then through the whole relationship, we're chasing that from them, never realizing it was something that we, we, we felt, that we put out, that we allowed. But then as things go on and little mishaps happen in the relationship, we start to guard and we don't allow ourselves to feel it like that. But if we can let go of everything that happened in the relationship, we'll allow ourselves to feel that love for that person again. Okay. Um, okay. So having said that, we come from love, we go back to love. I don't know why I started on that, but um, I'm going to start to take callers now. And thank you so much, everybody, for being so patient and letting me go through that whole story. <laughs> And to get to just love, just love. And I could, you know what, I I could tell you that just love is such a, such an overpowering statement. There was a time when I had purchased this house and I moved into it. And this is how I learned how to clear um, things from places, <laughs> helped to send a lot of things home. <laughs> um, this, this necklace used to have a cross on it and now it has Archangel Michael because every night when I would go to sleep, the, the chain would stay on my neck, but the cross itself would be in the middle of my bedroom floor. <laughs> So I would pick up the cross, open the necklace, put it back on, close it up because there wasn't a hole in the clasp. So I finally, I, I and, and 
I, I would just say to God every night, what am I missing here? And he, the only thing I would hear back is love, just love, love, just love. To the point where I got up out of bed and I started writing it over and over. I, I know, like a crazy person on my wall because I said, I'm missing something here. I'm, I, I'm missing. What is this love? Just love. What is it a code? If I put it on the wall five times, well, like, is it like saying Jumanji three times? Jumanji, Jumanji, Jumanji. And you get to jump out of the craziness. Of, I mean, love, just love. So I wrote it. Love, comma, just love. Love, just love. I, I like wrote it like all these different ways. And I'm like, I just can't, Oh, I, what am I missing? And then, then during the, the near death is part of where I understood the love because I could feel it again. That birth love. Let's just call it birth love. We got that birth love going on up in here. <laughs> Okay, so like, listen, I could be on for 24 hours and not tell you all the stories just about that house. That house was hella crazy. Um, the things that happened, the, the experiences, all of it. And I and like other life, like my other two near death experiences, which they were really sad. <laughs> Not that this one wasn't. I mean, two full grown adults asking, what should we do there? <laughs> kind of sad. <laughs> kind of like, whoo. And I wasn't even doing anything scandalous. I wasn't even being like a trickster or anything. I, it was like two seemingly normal people, like what people do when they think they're, you know, like, Mm. what do you mean? What should we do with her? You should pick me up. You should get me to a hospital. If this ever happens to any of you or those particular people, call an ambulance. Dial 911. That's what you should do. <laughs> but whatever you do, do not grab a shovel. I'm just saying, because look, I came back. I wonder if I would have decided not to come back if I would still be buried in their yard. I laugh, but inside I'm crying. <laughs> Let me tell you. And this is true. I like, I wish I was making this up. I'll show you my ankle with all of my. Can you see my pins? They're right there. <laughs> I will show you my ankle with my pins and my screws and my plates. <laughs> Okay, I'll be back Wednesday at noon to answer more of your questions. Until then, know you are loved more than you could ever even imagine. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. Bye.